Well, let's go to the book of Luke, chapter 7. Luke, chapter 7, verse 11. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is here. He is in this house. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, it happened the day after that he went into a city called Nain. Many of his disciples went with him in a large crowd. When he came near the gate of the city, behold, a dead man was being carried out, the only son of his mother, she was a widow, and a large crowd from the city was with her. Praise God. I want to praise you today on which direction? Are you headed? Which direction are you headed? Amen. Would you would you pray with us right now? Father, again, we come to you in this room, and we're asking uh, for wisdom in this the remainder of this service. Your words, you know our hearts, God. You know our hearts. And we need your anointing. We need your anointing, God. Not It's not of us, God, but it's of you, God. And help us again to speak the things that we'll talk to someone Today, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. And you may be seated. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Well, good to be here today. All right, all right. I, I could use some help here today. I'm going to ask Thomas, would you help me? That means you got to get up. <laughs> you got to come up here. And uh, I want... Big, strapping men. Okay. Uh, 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 who? Oh, that, yeah. Strapping. Yeah. Uh, I'll take, we'll take, that like guy right there. He looks like he could do it. All right. So I want you to, I want you guys to come over here. Okay. Each of you is going to have one end of this board. All right. All right. That, now you can set it down for a moment. Uh, Christian, are you going to help me today? All right, yeah, all right. W would you would you come and lay on that board? All right, all right. Yeah, yeah, okay, take a nap if you want. That's good. All right. Now, can you can you guys pick them up, or do we need do you need help? No, what? Hang on, buddy. All right, you you can set him back down for a minute. Okay, watch out for his hands. All right, all right. Now, now I. I need some more more help here. All right, you, you want to help? Come on over. All right, you can help me. All right, you guys, you guys, you can help me too. All right, you're gonna come. You go stand over here. Stand over here. All right, you, you go stand over there too, bud. All right, all right. You gonna help me, Benny? All right, you. All right, guy. I got quite. A, I'm getting a crowd here. Uh. All right, I need a weeping mother. <laughs> oh, okay. He says you can do the job. So I, I have a weeping mother. S Sister Cece, would you come and help us today? Hallelujah. Weeping mother. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. You're, you are the weeping mother. All right. You just... You, you know, this this is your son here, so you want to get close. In fact, you may help him to stay on the board. All right, all right, all right. Now, now I need a, uh, I need some folks over here. All right, over here. Who's going to help me, or do I have to call you by name? Hallelujah. You're going to come help me. Come on up here, Gianni. All right, yes. All right, I, hey, come on. You got to do this quickly, or we'll be here till three. Hallelujah. I need more help. All right. All right. You, you, and you, and you come up here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you. All right. All right. All right. All right. And Sister Lisa, you were, come on up and help us, Sister Lisa. All right. Now, y'all got to be, you're, you're a crowd. You're not a line. So, you know, a crowd doesn't, okay, they don't, they, all right, all right. All right, all right, yeah. all right. Now, 
Hey, where? Okay, all right. You're, you're gonna, which side are you going to be with, bro? You're going to be on this side or that side? You've got to make up your mind. Okay. Well, that's that's he. He wants to know which direction we're going. All right. All right. All right. Let's 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 pick him up. Pick him up. All right. Just just hang on to him. All right. All right. Now, now, we just just read the scripture, did we not? What you get in the scripture, coming out of name, is a funeral procession. They're on their way to the cemetery. You can come this way a little bit. So they are coming out of the city. Okay, you can stop there. Hey, sis, sis. He's dead. He can't feel anything. But I do. Oh, you do. <laughs> Amen. So coming out of the city is this procession of mourners. And the Bible says it was a crowd coming out of the city. Coming into the city is another crowd. This crowd is coming with Jesus. Coming to name. Amen. They have probably journeyed Capernaum is about 25 miles from Nain. Okay, and it's probably late in the afternoon when they arrive at the city. The Jewish custom of that day was when somebody dies, you bury them within 24 hours. Amen. So sometime, probably this morning, this boy has passed away. And they're out, they're on their way to the cemetery. Amen. Coming the other direction is Jesus. Hallelujah. And the Bible, come on crowd. Were you sitting down? Okay, I thought I saw somebody sitting down. Oh, oh. some things can't be helped. It's short people. They drive little cars. They go beep, beep. All right, all right. And so these these two crowds meet, all right? And Jesus stops this funeral procession. Are, are you all right? Are you wore out? Okay, good. He stops this funeral procession, approaches this young man, never gives his name, never gives the name of the mother. And he says to that young man, son, get up. <laughs> he says no set him down now get up <laughs> all right and presents him to his mama all right thank you for your help you're all were wonderful thank you thank you appreciate it which direction are you headed this morning which direction? Spiritually speaking today, all of us are in one of these two crowds. All of us in this room are in one of these two crowds. We are going opposite directions. One again is coming out of the city. The other is coming into the city. Now, I don't know how much of our old songs that you know. But we used to sing in that in, uh, long ago, in that city where the Lamb is the light. In that city where there cometh no night. I have a mansion over there that is free from toil and care. And I'm going to the city where the Lamb is is the lie. We used to sing songs and it would talk about having mansions over there. Come and go with me to my father's house. To my father's house. Now we don't necessarily sing those songs today, although we have songs that 
perhaps are similar in, in their thought. Amen. But I'm here to ask you again, which crowd are you in and what direction are you going? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The crowd that is coming with Jesus is celebrating. They are worshiping. They are praising. They are excited. They are walking with the Master. On the other side is a crowd that is feeling the gloom and the despair that death brings. Amen. And they are so entirely, amen, different in that regard. Amen. I learned a long time ago that Jesus was going to come again. In fact, that was one of the things that propelled me, amen, to coming into the kingdom of God, raised in a pastor's home, but I knew how to lie, raised in a pastor's home, but I knew how to steal, amen, and, and, and it wasn't my parents that taught me those things, that was the very nature of who I am. And in 1962, some of you don't even, you weren't even existing at that time. The Cuban Missile Crisis was going on. Amen. And I, I knew that if Jesus came, I wasn't going to be in that crowd. I knew if he came, I, I had sinned. I had done wrong. I, I had committed evil, even as a young, young man. Amen. And I, and I needed God. And, and if he came, I was going to be left behind. And I didn't want to be left behind. Oh no, I, I knew what it meant to be left behind. So, amen, when I was born again, when I was born again of the water and the Spirit, as that's what Jesus said in John chapter 3 and verse 5, you must be born again of the water and Spirit in order to enter into the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of heaven. Of God. Amen. You must be born again. I had been born again. I had been baptized in the name of Jesus. And I, I had been filled with the Holy Ghost. And I was in a I was in a church service yesterday. Amen. And one of the girls sitting there, amen, beautiful smile and, and just a pleasant personality. I said, What is your name? And she says, My name is Gladys. Amen. And and I uh I wanted to say, but I'm not sure she would completely understand. I wanted to say, oh, I know a Gladys that was with me at an altar when I was a boy. Amen. And she prayed with me. And she was the only one that stayed with me. Because I didn't, you know, I didn't go up the altar and I didn't get the Holy Ghost right away. She stayed with me. Amen. And, and with her help, with her instruction and with her prayer, God filled me with the Holy Ghost. And I began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave the utterance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, and so I was raised talking about heaven. I was raised on the fact that, amen, God is coming. In fact, my father talked a lot about end times. And, you know, he would do all, you know, he had to, he did all that stuff. He has, in fact, I have a chart in my office. That was his chart that you could hang on, you hang on the, on the, on a wire and you, you know, he had all kinds of stuff on there. And, and I remember as a kid that, that get my attention. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The crowd that was coming with Jesus was going into the city. Hallelujah. Hebrews 11, 10 says, for he waited for the city. I'm talking now about Abraham. He waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Abraham was waiting for a city. Verse number uh, 13 says, These all died, not having received the promises, but have seen them afar off, were assured and embraced them and confessed them that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Amen. In this crowd over here, there's some people that got their eye on the city. Hallelujah. And it's not the city of name. It's the city who the maker of that city, amen, is God himself. 
And they, amen, the Bible says in verse 14, they declare plainly that they seek a homeland. Oh, brothers and sisters, it's time to declare plainly that I'm on my way to heaven and I'm singing as I go. I'm so glad my name is written in the book. Uh, just to know his blood has cleansed me and I'm ready now to go makes me want to shout, Hallelujah! I feel good. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. We need to declare plainly. You see, for some of us, amen, we're distracted. We're, 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 we're finding ourselves in the wrong crowd. We need to get in this crowd going into the city. Hallelujah. The Bible will say, and truly if they had called to mind, verse 15, that country from which they had come out, they would have had opportunity to return. Hey, listen to me. Israel came out of Egypt. They came out of bondage. But if you read their narrative in the book of Acts, amen, they all, or the book of Exodus, they always, they're saying, oh, I wish, I wish we had the leeks and I wish we had the onion and garlic. You know, it wasn't so bad back there in Egypt. We at least could eat all these things. Amen. They, they were forgetting that cruel bondage that they had been under. Are you today forgetting what God brought you out of? Are you forgetting the bondage that you were in? Would you rather go back, as Peter said, back to the vomit like a dog goes back to its vomit? Amen. Or do you want to, do you want to sing that song? I'm on my way to heaven. I'm on my way to the city. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 16 says, Now they desire a better, that is a heavenly country. Therefore God is not ashamed to call them, call, to be called their God, for He has done what? He's prepared a city for them. I don't know what it's going to be like, Brother Gary. I don't know. I do know that Paul is caught up into the third heaven and he, and he makes, the, you know, there's all kinds of people write all kinds of books, make all kinds of money from their descriptions of heaven. But Paul, in the anointed word of God, in the inspired word of God, you know what he said? I, he said, I, 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 I saw things that were unlawful to utter. In other words, I could not come up with words that you could Amen. That I could use to describe what I saw. Oh, come on, brothers and sisters. We're on our way somewhere. We're in a crowd of people going to a city. Hallelujah. God is prepared. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, it says, But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn. That's us. Who are registered in heaven to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than, than that of Abel. Hallelujah. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I'm in the crowd that's going into the city. Oh, some of you, you know, you're not real interested today. You know about it, but I'll tell you why you're not real interested. Because you've involved yourself in the crowd that's going the opposite direction. You've involved yourself, and it's taken away that desire to go with Jesus into the city. It's taken, it, it has told you. It's told you. Your senses are dead. I, many times as I've had my radio on in the car and a song would come up, amen, and I'll have tears flowing down my face. I, I'm, I am not sad. I'm just feeling the urge of home. You know, I'm not a young man anymore. I'm 65. Uh, I, I ain't stupid. 
I know that I don't get another 65 years. Uh, I may only have just today for all I know. Amen. But I'm on my way to a city. Uh, listen to me, brothers and sisters. If you do not have a desire to go to heaven, you see, Jesus coming is the blessed hope. The glorious return, Paul writes to Titus and says, the glorious return, it's the blessed hope. And John will say, those that have this hope, what do they do? Purify themselves. So, amen, what happens, amen, when that hope is diminished in us? We're not, we're not purifying ourselves. We're not cleansing ourselves from all fle uh, uh, filthiness of the flesh and the spirit. That's the crowd that's on its way in. We're going in. We're going in. We're going into city where again the lamb is the light. We're headed that way. Perhaps it don't move you today. Well, it ought to move you as your believer. Or maybe as Brother Wasman said earlier today, it's only up here. And it needs to get down here. And it needs to cause you to act. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, that's just one of the crowds. There's the other crowd. They're coming out of the city. You know, death is with them. In reality, they're already dead. The cemetery is just one of the phases. Right? Paul says in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1, and you he made alive who were, what? Dead in trespasses and sins. If you are not born again, if you are not filled with the Spirit, I'm not trying to be ugly to you today. You are dead in your sin. You're with the crowd coming out of the city, carrying the dead. That's where you're at. I know my world wants to soften that a little bit. And let's not be so explicit. Let, let's, let's, let's tone it down. But you're dead. You're dead in your sin. You're on your way or you're already in the cemetery. By nature, it says in the Scripture, we are children of wrath. You understand? We are facing the condemnation of God. No, but don't condemn anybody. You know, and uh, it says in Romans 1, 8, 1, that, it, how's it go? Let me help me. Get me started. In Christ Jesus, who walked not after this, the flesh, but, but walk after the Spirit. Amen. There is a condemnation. You see, if you're not in Christ Jesus, there is a condemnation. You understand? It, 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 this is not, you know, you can't choose, I'll just sit on the fence kind of business. No, there is a condemnation. In John chapter 3, verse 36, it says, He who believes in the Son has everlasting life. And that everlasting life is the very eternal Spirit of God that dwells within and he who does not believe. Now, that's not suggesting that you don't believe in the existence of God because even the devil believes in the existence of God. Amen. Do not believe the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abides on him. Question is today, which crowd are you walking with? Are you coming into the city? Are you going away from the city? That, that's the question. Which crowd, which direction are you headed today? Again, there's quite a contrast between the two crowds. One is rejoicing in the Lord. 
Amen. Sister Abby, I see you back there right now. Sister Abby, the reason I don't spend a lot of time complaining, even I'm hurting right now, but I'm on my way to heaven. And I got a great God. And He could heal me right now immediately if He so chose to do it. But regardless, if He heals me or not, on this side of the door, I know I am going to be healed. Why? Because I'm on my way to heaven. And brother and sister, you can't beat that with a stick. You can't beat that with a stick. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. So, so we rejoice. We praise God. We're excited about God. You want to be a testimony, you got to get that dill pickle look off your face. Quit drinking the dill juice. Get out of the vinegar. Get some sweet. Sweet. Hallelujah. Have a smile on your face. Amen. Walk with a smile. Amen. Sing with a smile. Dance in the Holy Ghost with a smile. Speak in tongues with a smile. You actually need to convince people that you're happy living for God. Well, hallelujah. Well, that's not me. That's the problem. It is you. And if you just let the Holy Ghost get in on this thing, it'd be a whole lot different. But you want to restrict the Spirit of God. You don't want the Spirit of God to operate because when God's Spirit begins to operate, anything can take place. So in that crowd, on their way into the city, in that crowd is the potential for a boy to be raised from the dead. It is latent with power. Laden with power. It exudes power. I mean, it's coming down the road. If, if power could be manifested for us to see it, you would see this overwhelming cloud coming down. Have you ever seen a tornado? I, I like, I like, uh, I, I go on Google or, or YouTube, whatever, and I'll, I'll, I'll watch tornadoes. That's as close as I want to get to a tornado. Just watching some other fool who decided he could get right up next to the thing. Uh, 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 this, this fool will stay on, on, on Google and, and I'll watch it and, and it's, whoa, ominous and, and just uh, actually scary. I, I wouldn't want to be in, in their shoes. If you could only see what was in that crowd today, if it could be manifested where it was visible to your eye, it would make a F5 tornado look like just a gentle breeze. Oh. Are you so indoctrinated into this world's thinking? Amen, that whatever they say is absolutely right. Amen. Well, however, amen, whatever comes against you is, are you so indoctrinated that you can't see what is invisible to the naked eye? Amen. That power of God that is even right now in this building. See, the dead can't see it. The crowd over here is in mourning. Proud is lamenting the death of her only son. Uh, that's all they see. They see. You, you know what praise does? I, I, I'm going back right now. This praise conditions you to receive from God. It does. That's why. Many have an issue in that area. You struggle in that area. It seems foolish in that area because the enemy does not 
want you to be conditioned to receive from God. As Sister Cinda said earlier, you, you, you see all that junk. You know, my, my phone goes off sometimes. I don't even want to look at it because it's all the news. And, of course, you know, good news does, doesn't even get out of bed. And bad news is all, all we travel around the world three or four times. You, you understand? And, 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 and you, if you feed on that stuff, you know, I am tough. Hallelujah. More ways than one. Maybe one day you'll be able to be as quick as I am. <laughs> all right, all right. You get mired down because you're having fun. So which which crowd are you in? What what direction are you going? You can, you can be with the mourners. That poor lady, you, you understand, she is, she, she's in a bad shape. Understand? And, and, and the mourners, they, there's always people that like to come and help you with your bad news. Wait a minute, they, they come to help you, but before it's all done, they're telling you how bad they got it. And then, and then their bad is much worse than your bad. You know, and, and it seems to get, it just amplifies and gets bigger. Next time they do, they want you to tell them, hey, let me enjoy my bad. All right, all right, all right, I'm back, I'm back. They're coming to this city. There's two sons. Everybody say two sons. One was alive, but destined to die. The other was dead, but was destined to live. Two sons. Two sons. We refer to Jesus as the Son of God. In fact, it uses terminology like the begotten Son of God, which means He's you. Unique, all right? There's no one else like him. Now, some would suggest that he began as a son back, way back at eternity, all right? They have the Father, and they have the Son, and of course, they have the Holy Ghost, what they call the triune Godhead, you know, and... The son, they will tell you, was back there. My only problem is with that, if that was if that's the case, I would like to know who his mother is. If you slow again. He uses that terminology. Anytime you read a reference to it. In the Gospels, the Son of God. That's a re that represents the deity of Jesus. He was fully God, and he was fully man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is from the beginning, but not as a son, because he is the eternal God. As a son, it was in the mind and the plan of God and did not come into existence until he was made of a woman, made under the law, according to Galatians chapter 4 and verse 5. Hallelujah. No, my friend, there is no such thing called the Trinity in the Word of God. Amen. There is one God, and his name is one. Jesus was God again in flesh, who came and dwelt among us, who was not ashamed to call us his brother who died for us and for our sins. That sonship, I, I, I'm just, just, I'll come back. That sonship 
is going to come to an end. Did you know that? Have you ever read in Corinthians chapter 15 where he gives up? He gives up that sonship. Why? Because the purpose of the sonship was to redeem man from the curse of sin. And the only way to redeem man was to die on a cross and shed his blood. Oh, hallelujah. So as a son, as a son, he always does the will of his father. As a son, he prays. It's not deity praying to deity. It is flesh praying to deity. Hallelujah. 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 Two sons. One on his way to a cross. The other on his way to resurrection. Hallelujah. Not only, not only that, but there are two sufferers that met at that gate. Two sufferers. Hey, have you ever read what Isaiah said in Isaiah 53 and 3? He is despised and rejected by men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Next verse. He surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. Two sufferers, one in the crowd rejoicing. But he fully understood the feelings of that widow. He understood what she was going through. He could easily identify with her. Hallelujah. He know, he knows that in society she was left alone, that there were no resources to care for widows. Amen. And she had lost her son, and he felt her pain. He felt the pain that death had brought to this woman, and he did something about it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He, he did something about it. Praise God. He felt her pain. Two crowds, two sons, two sufferers met. Amen. Which direction are you headed today? Not only were there two sufferers that met, but there were two enemies that met. Paul writes to us in Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 26. He says, the last enemy that will be destroyed is death. Two enemies met at the gates of that city. One crowd coming out mourning. The other on its way to the city rejoicing. Yes, it is an enemy. Yes, most of us here have experienced the pain and the grief of losing somebody. We have. We have seen it happen. I have been to more scenes of death than I care to ever see the rest of my life. I've seen people close their eyes for the last time. I've seen them swallow a few times and then watch as breath is no longer coming from them. Realize that I'm just looking at the tabernacle, tent, just flesh. But I, there's just something about it. It's hard to let go. It, 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 it moves on you, you know. You know, they used to, I don't know if they do it so much anymore, but they used to, they would ask, 
you know, you, you want an open casket, you want a closed casket. Well, some families want an open casket. And so they would let everybody okay, come by and say your last goodbyes. And then they would ask them to depart. They'd even ask the family to depart because then they had to, had to put that, wind it down, cover, and put the casket lid down. Amen. And it was too painful for some to see. At last, look, you know, I tell you right now, quite frankly, I don't want the last look my son was in. I'm part of the crowd that's waiting for the new look. Oh, will the circle be unbroken? By and by, Lord, by and by. Hallelujah. No, it ain't going to be unbroken. Hallelujah. That's what I'm looking for. But you see, if you're not walking with God, if you're not allowing the Spirit of God to lead you, you're in the wrong crowd. You're in a crowd of mourning. You're in a crowd of death. Now, you, can you have fun in that crowd? Oh, yeah, you can drink yourself to death. You can snort. You can, you can do all kinds of stuff. But all that does is momentarily dull your senses. The enemies met. Hallelujah. Paul said, verse 51, the 15th chapter, Behold, I tell you mystery. We shall not all sleep. We shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye and at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible. We shall be changed. For the incorruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has been put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death swallowed up in the grave. O death, where is your sting? O hates, where is your victory? Thanks be to God, verse 57, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I, 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 I'm be ugly here. I'm be ugly. I, I, I practice being ugly a lot. I have people tell me, "Oh, my loved one's an angel up in heaven watching over me." And I will. I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, there is absolutely no scripture support of that concept. None. 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 You understand? Now, you, if that makes you feel good to do that, then you, you, you go ahead. Go for it. I know right now that my son is not interested in what's happening here, nor my parents. I may sound cold to you, but they're wrapped up in a celebration with God. You understand? To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. That's what it says. That's what it says. And Paul said, you know, it's hard for me, he says. You know, for me to die is gain. It's Christ. And for me to live, it's your gain. He says, I'm thinking about it. I, I'm, I'm, I think I'm weighing on the side of my gain. Because my gain is I'm with him forever. And the race is over and everything's done. And I'm rejoicing throughout all eternity. What an act of tenderness it must have been. What an act of tenderness it must have been when Jesus presented to that mother a living son. What a, I'd have liked to have been in that crowd that day watching him as he, can, can you imagine how her face must have looked? Can, can you smile, Cece? 
Can, can you imagine losing Danny and then God bringing him back to life? The incredibleness of it. The incredibleness of it. He did it. In fact, you know, I'm not telling you something you don't know, that Jesus never ever attended a funeral. Wait a minute. He went. But when he went, he put the funeral director out of business. Here, you can have the casket back. We don't need it no more. Do you get refunds? Because my, 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 my child doesn't need this anymore. I, I, every place where death was, and when Jesus confronted it, it could not stand. Understand. So, what direction are you headed today? Are you born again? Have you been baptized in the name of Jesus? Have you been filled with the Holy Ghost? Have you, have you received the gift of the Holy Spirit speaking with other tongues as God's Spirit gives the utterance? Have you believed? And if, you, and if the answer to those things is no, I'm not trying to be ugly, but you're with the crowd coming out of the city, a crowd that only has death to experience, only mourning. It is actually being reserved for the judgment of God. Okay. I want to sit down. I want to sit on the funeral. Because uh, I ain't dead yet. And I'll take more than Thomas and, da and Danny if it's me. <laughs> It'll take all the strong men of this church. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, when you have my funeral, have it out in the parking lot. That way you don't have to deal with the steps. Leave me in the hearse. Because you know what, Brother John? I'm not there anyways. <laughs> Hallelujah. You're only burying my remains. Which crowd are you in? Are you in this crowd that's mourning? You're not born again. You're not walking with God. Or you've walked away from God. Are you doing everything that deadens the presence of God in your life? Or are you in this crowd who's rejoicing? They're, they're born again. They got something in front of them that's incredible. And they're walking with the incredible one. Hallelujah. Which crowd? I, I thank God for the Son of God, who came in to seek and to save that which was lost. I'm thankful that a Roman centurion standing by the cross, that surely this was the Son of God, a pagan acknowledging that the way this man died is not like any other death that he had seen. I am thankful. This is a message in itself. I am thankful that even on the cross, the power of God did not diminish. For Jesus would say to that thief who is not under the new dispensation of grace, who is still under the law, he would say to that thief, today you'll be with me in paradise. A dying Savior still had the power. You understand? And he ain't dying today. He's alive. So I, I'm, I'm coming too close. I'm wrapping it up. So which, which crowd y'all going to be in? Which, which crowd? You got it right, buddy. He's, my, my Christian friend there is pointing over there. It's the crowd. I was here. I want to be over there. Yeah. So, so as we're closing today, I had quite an experience yesterday, Sister Janice and I. We got to the House of Correction, and we come in, and they said, well, we don't have anybody signed up for a service. 
And, well, what about the women? Well, again, nobody signed up for a service of the women either. Okay? So, so we waited. They could have said, well, I'm sorry, there's no service here and today because nobody signed up. And, you know, thank you for coming out. God bless you. No, they wouldn't have said God bless you. They just said thank you for coming out. And uh, so we just stood there and uh, Price, I, I don't know her first name, Price went to work on the phone, and, and when we walked into the room where we have our service, there were, for the men, there was nine guys there. Nine guys. Yeah. And that went from nothing to nine. Now, CC didn't go with me yesterday. I'll never forgive her. <laughs> I, I just, I just, I just teasing, sis. And so, probably... Seven of the nine don't speak English, right? You ever, ever tried to have a service when most of the people don't understand what you're saying? So I asked, can anybody here translate? And I got, I got dear Freddie. Freddie had been with me in D North. He's now in one of the other dorms. Uh, Freddie had come and I, I knew he didn't know much about God. And so he said, well, I'll try. And so, Freddie begins to translate for me. And to the best, I, I don't know what he's telling him. <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping he's saying what I tell him. You know? <laughs> but, but, but he's talking, man. And, and they're listening, you know. And uh, I started talking about Peter. You know, that part of the story where Jesus tells him to launch out into the deep and and he obeys in faith. The net is filled with fish. And uh, so I'm having him explain it. I mean, it just seems to take a little longer to explain it in Spanish than it did in English. But uh, I get to that part where Peter, when he sees this fantastic miracle of provision, the Bible says that Peter said to Jesus, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man. And when I said that, I looked over at Freddie. He couldn't even talk. Tears were rolling down his face. Other men in that room had tears on their face. It was a precious moment to me. It told me again, and I always need to be reminded by God, I'll handle it, Mark. I'll handle it. You just stay out of my way. I'll take whatever you got, and I'll use it. And old precious Freddie. Just broke down. Broke down. I I'm telling you, he broke down. He couldn't speak. How can you translate when the translator can't speak? Oh, he was speaking all right. But it wasn't in words. It was in actions. I'm here to tell you today. Being in this crowd is exciting. And I'm trying to help people get out of this crowd where death is so prevalent. So which, which crowd are you in today? Which crowd? Uh, you see, they're going opposite directions. Y you can do what you want to do. Well, you know, the Lord's not going to stop you. You've got to want to stop. If you're addicted today and you want deliverance, you're going to want to have deliverance. He is not going to force deliverance on you. You understand? You understand? Say, I don't know why it hasn't worked. Because you're not ready for Him to work. 
Or perhaps you're like that, that village that witnessed the casting out of a legion of devils out of that man. And that herd of pigs that ran down violently into the sea and drowned. And you come out and you see that man that had been filled with devils, clothed and in his right mind. And your response is, please, Jesus, leave. You see, I'm just, I'm just talking right now. Trying to end. You see, some people really don't want deliverance. The only thing they want is no longer to face consequences. They want to drink all night, never get a headache, never puke out their guts, never get stopped for drunken driving. They, they want to get high, and that high just keep going on, man. They, they, don't want, they don't want to come home with urine-filled pants. How could you say that? Because I've been in homes where somebody came home and their pants were stained with urine. You see, you got to want deliverance. you got to want deliverance. See, when you get in this crowd, you're experiencing deliverance in life. Over here, it's just death. You're here today, and you need God to work. I'm telling you, He will work. But you got to want Him to work. God is not a negotiator. What do you mean? When you tell him, well, I'll give you half my life, he ain't going to say, uh-uh, I want everything. How about if I give you three quarters? Uh-uh, I want everything. You see, if you will not give yourself entirely to him, there is no such thing as a quarter Christian, as a half Christian, as a three quarter Christian. You know what it is? It's all or nothing. And see, that's what some people's problem is. Why do you want to hang on to death? Why? You're like that baby. I thought little Aaliyah today, her hair was out of its little dumaflaji. It was wild. And she got a hold of her hair. And she started to cry. Why? Because it hurt. Hear me. You're adults. And you're thinking, you're thinking that somehow it's all going to be different. But you haven't let go of your hair. You're still pulling on your hair. And it's still going to continue to tug. And that is not going to change. So, which direction are you headed? Well, I'm going with the crowd. Yeah, the Bible says many are called, but few are chosen. It says narrows the gate and narrows the way, and few that be that find it. It says broad is the way that leads to destruction. So if you're a person that just wants to hang out with the majority, you're in this crowd over here. It's over here. There's life. And we stand this morning in this house. So, so, so which, which crowd do you want to be in? <laughs> How old are you, Christian? Six? 
if a six-year-old boy has enough sense and understanding today on one of the most spiritual things that you could ever experience, and he points over there, it ought to dawn on you, adult. It ought to get through to you, adult. So, sing, sister. Why don't, why don't you just spend a moment praying and as she sings, and then, then, then this altar will be open for anybody that wants to pray.